Yes, people, welcome to a brand new episode of Titan Talk. It's your boy Kyojin. Mr. Kid AB, man, they are. Yeah, and we got a special guest with us today. I forgot to ask you before, did you want us to say your name or not? Yeah, I can say my name. Oh, hello, guys. Craig. Hello, hello. Yeah, it's so cute, man. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but today, we are here to talk about a serious topic. First of all, apologies. Um, the episode will be coming out a little bit later than scheduled uh, because we're actually recording this on the day that it's meant to drop because it's really really important and if there are any if there's ever been an episode where you feel like you need to stay all the way to the end i feel like this needs to be one of them and if there ever was an episode where you felt like you had to go and talk to your friends about it afterwards um, this is definitely one of them um, so today we're going to talk about um, what has been happening in palestine um yeah, first and foremost, I think we should just say, like, for any, well, if there is anyone. We did even introduce the guest. We did. We did, we did. Did he? You said your name, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I apologise. <laughs> so we got in yeah. a specialist for this topic this week, man. Yeah. Um, because Not a specialist. Prague is actually, a, give you a little bit of background on Prague. The reason why the I credentials, fam, from... you got to tell them, man. Tell them the credentials. How far back are you going to go? He's actually a pro-Palestine protest veteran out here like he's like <laughs> I was going to say Ryan Giggs but his 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 career's been whoa, whoa. recently um, I don't know I'm going to uh, Alan Shearer I don't know someone someone who's been in the game for a long time isn't it? Um, so yeah he, what, what age did you first start going I kind of came into the Palestine um, issue in college and like I didn't really know anything about it um, and obviously I'm not like I'm from India, and even though I was kind of like politically active, I guess I didn't really, really know much about the issues. And then when I came to college, I met people who were like on both sides of the issue. So I feel like I thought that was kind of good because I had a, a standpoint from like both sides. And so I, I, I think the views that I have now are like kind of unbiased, I guess. Obviously, everyone is biased to an extent. But yeah, so then from, from like 17 years old, I've been kind of learning more about it. And um going to protests and going to talks and um yeah, yeah that's, that's about did it. you that's like, sort of like a side question did you because i know we learned it, me and ab we learned it like year 10 year 11 i think no, i learned yeah. it I, 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 in year 11 yeah gcse history we had it for gcse mm. history did you guys <laughs> learn it at your school <laughs> bro i'm surprised that you you lot actually covered it in, in school that's quite good for your teachers but we i've never not even even i did politics a level yeah, the syllabus yeah. didn't cover it. Even at high school, the syllabus didn't cover it. Um, and at uni, I've taken modules that are like, one module was international relations and conflict. So that should be about Palestine. They didn't even mention. At so, all? No. So, um, and even when I've like started to raise it at uni and stuff, it's the, the lecturers, no one wants to talk about it really. So I feel like I've just been lucky in terms of like friends I've had and um, yeah. music I've listened to. Shout out Loki. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. For us, we, we learned about it at school uh, for year 11. But I remember even then, um, we can talk about it a little bit later as well. Even then, like, it was very much like, okay, we're going we're gonna to tell you everything. And it's going to be like exams. And yes, there's a debate, but you can't, we weren't really, I don't know about you, AB, but like in my, in my class, yeah, we weren't explicitly allowed to have opinions on it. Um, like I bought, every, I remember one of our boys, he bought in a, like a Palestine uh, flag uh, and I put on the table. Uh, I, I had it from him and I put on the table during class here. Yeah. It took me out of class, the teacher, and was like, yeah, you can't, um, we're not trying to divide the class so you can't like have that out um, and explicitly show your support for Palestine. I was like, what the whole, like, surely the whole point is like to have a conversation on it. And mm. like, I think that's, more. that goes deeper than teachers as well. It's like, yeah. they, are, they are taught that they're literally not allowed to, Teachers oh, are told that they're not allowed to, yeah, they're not allowed to. Yeah. yeah. And then the other time, I, what I learned about it personally was, um, I went to, we had this one module at uni because it was called like the apocalypse module, yeah. And it was all about the end of the world. And it was it was like, oh, the thing is, I wish I had paid more attention to it because it was so interesting. But it was like talking about how a lot of like big US politicians and like a lot of politicians in the West have a lot of policies based on like um, apocalypse theories from loads of different Abrahamic uh, religions 
And really? That's, yeah, and that's why, like, some, not all, because obviously the, the main dispute is over, like, land and ethnic cleansing and all that stuff like that. But there are some, um, like, oh, I wish I rem- I wish I had the notes and everything, but it was, like, <laughs> there was, like, high-ranking U.S. senators and stuff that, like, justified it all because just because they believed in, like, a, like the Jerusalem was, like, the place where the apocalypse is going to take place and stuff like that, and that's why we need to fight for control and stuff like that. Um, it's very scary, I can't lie. Even, even like, not necessarily apocalyptic theories, but just it's so widespread that people believe, oh, this was some a group's ancestral homeland like thousands of years ago, so now they have a right to it. That's so scary. Like, imagine if that was applied to America. Oh, the Boy. Native the Native Americans, they had the right to it. Like, they have a way better claim to America than... It's, yeah, I was thinking about that really as well the other day. Like there was basically there was a person making a claim like oh we like we're coming back to our land and stuff like that and we like we built that land and all that stuff yeah and I was thinking imagine imagine like based on the logic I forgot exactly what they said but based on the logic that they had yeah imagine if like people who came from like the British colony of India and people who came like in the Windrush generation just turned around and said okay now we're gonna demand everything back that we built from this country and like it's gonna be our country now Do you, can you imagine like the up 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 that would cause yeah, facts. Country wouldn't function in the first place yeah. without without all these people. Um, but just to like sort of focus in, uh, is like there is a specific issue at hand here, um, which is in East Jerusalem, or they call it uh, occupied East Jerusalem, because I didn't know this, but there's a very very good um, creator on 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 like Instagram and TikTok, and he speaks a lot about this. And I'm not gonna lie, I learned a lot from his videos and stuff like that. Um, what's his name you know? I'm not I'm, I'll, I'll let you know but I'm not going to put on the podcast just because he was saying like uh, his family's really getting death threats from like oh I see. people yeah because he is Palestinian and he has family in Palestine so there's I don't think it's worth putting his name out there uh, but we'll put links in our bio um, yeah. but yeah he was saying like so East Jerusalem basically belongs to like the Palestinian territories like under international law but the Israeli government don't really care about that uh, and they've been slowly, slowly just taking it back and taking control. Um, and now what they have is these, these like settlers who come from like other countries or they come from like kind of richer areas of Israel. A lot of them come from the US and they'll like just rock up at um, Palestinian homes and say, okay, this is my home now and you need to leave. Um, and the reason why they can, can do that and get away with it is because they have full backing of the Israeli army and the Israeli police. Um, and if those people living in the home disagree, um, then they will be escorted out with like force, basically, um, and left on the street. Um, and this is in right now. This is in the the neighborhood. I think it's called Sheikh Jarrah. Um, mm. The basically six families right now have to. It's May right now. They were told to leave by May um, their homes, and they've appealed to the Israeli court, um, and they ha- their appeal has been postponed. So I think that's due to protesting as well. Um, that's the we have to be careful about that one as well. I feel like that's something to address. Yeah. Um, just on that on that thing being being delayed by thirty days, I feel like that's a deliberate like tactic just to let things blow over. So yeah. I feel like it's really important that for people who are like posting stuff on their story and um, kind of going to protests and applying pressure and whatever, like they keep doing that even mm-hmm. in thirty days time, in sixty days time, like however long they delay this for. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, because historically, um, the Palestinian families have not never won these appeals. Um, they they just don't win these appeals. Um, and uh, so, right now, uh, there was like a couple of a few days ago, a lot of the Palestinian people were coming together to protest in, in East Jerusalem. Um, but because there are, are already Israeli settlers in Sheikh Jarrah, they called the police on them. And then while they were breaking their fast, the Palestinian people had uh, water cannons thrown at them. Uh, so I think it's called like skunk water. So it's like water mixed with sewage water and stuff like sewage um, while they were breaking their fast. Obviously, we've seen uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque as well. Um, they were attacked with tear gas. I think it was stun grenades inside the mosque. Um, and, and and uh, you know, I was told that like also it's like a, it's like a scare tactic as well. That like every every time something the Palestinians like try and revolt, they because east that part of east jerusalem is like meant to be 
under Palestinian control, and it's called like the Muslim quarters, but they don't mm. they don't have control over it. So what the Israeli government will do will, will be like, you know, if you stop protesting, you know, you're free to pray there, uh, but if you keep protesting, you you know, we're going to cause issues for you and stuff like that. Um, so it is very very worrying. Um, we've seen a lot of videos as well this week. I just want to, I guess, get your thoughts on everything you guys have seen um, so far this week first. Guest first. Yeah, obviously, it's, it's like, I don't even know what to say. Like, this is, uh, imagine if the, the third holiest site or the second holiest site in like a different religion, imagine it for any other religion, if that was not even like desecrated from the outside or people were protesting outside, that would, let alone throwing smoke grenades inside, like that's ridiculous. And like the footage of it on fire and then people are celebrating outside. Like. Bro, I saw, I saw that, I messaged Kaojin that, um, last night when I saw that, yeah. <coughs> bruv, I was, my, blood, makes me was, sick, my blood was boiling, bruv. And I saw this one, one nerd like, like laughing and hugging his friend. Fam, I had to stop watching it, bro. I, I was, I was, was going to dash my phone, bro. Bro, and, you know, and, the thing is, like, you know, up until kind of this stuff, like, usually, you know, you try to see, like, the best in people and stuff, and you try to be like, look, it's not necessarily the fault of all the people that are there. It's, like, the government. That are, now that doesn't even stand up. Like, yeah. if you're one of those citizens and you're moving into a settlement that you know someone's house or you're celebrating a mosque being desecrated, then, like, what are you, bro? You're a joke, man. Yeah. I feel like, especially this this year, while I've been on TikTok here, yeah, I feel like my for you page has been full of like peaceful Zionists. Um, like, do you know, you know, you know what I mean? And like, they'll be like, and 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 I'm not gonna lie, like I would watch it sometimes and be like, okay, you know what? At the end of the day, they are human too, uh, and they do want to have like a place to live and stuff like that. Um, and if you can come to some sort of understanding, that would be great. But then I'm seeing like when these attacks happen, like none of them are on my for you page. Do you know what I mean like it's all silence because then. I, it dawned on me as well like i feel like they've realized that you can't watch those videos watch people like be forcefully removed from their homes you can't watch people be attacked while breaking fast you can't be watch people being attacked while praying and 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 justify zionism in my opinion do you know what i mean 100 um, 100 yeah. uh, like in my mind it's becoming like peaceful zionism sounds like opposites it doesn't i don't think you can see what's going on around you and and still support that exactly yeah yeah, no, I, I agree in it. Like, I don't know, man. It's it's, it's weird, uh, and I think just obviously going back to. No, no, sorry. Um, yeah, so I don't know, man. I just feel like it's 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 good that I think a lot of people are talking about it. But then, uh, do you sometimes feel like? I don't think nothing's gonna come for me. You know, I can't lie. But... Like, do you ever feel like, oh, we've been down it's this been... road before? No, nah, uh, for me, we haven't been down the road like this before yeah in the sense that okay so like the way like if you if you hear like palestinian people talk about stuff i i feel like every time i hear them speak they're losing like enthusiasm and they're losing hope about what's happening because because so if you i feel like maybe we could put up a map or something when when you edit this but like there's there's a really good map or a really like showing you. map yeah, yeah. of what Palestine used to be yeah, and then yeah, yeah. how it's going over the years. Yeah, yeah. Bro, right now, you know, they talk about like the two-state solution. There should be a state of Palestine where Palestinians have rights, a state of Israel. It doesn't even exist right now yeah. because Pal pa the borders of what should be Palestine according to the UN and then according to like even after the war, Israel annexed parts of Palestine like Kyojin was talking about. Um, and even from those limited borders, now there's, it's just like there's inroads of settlements. So there's not even a place where you can call it Palestine anymore. So I can see why people are losing yeah. um, hope. By the, and like, if you, when we go to protests, it's kind of sad, like the people that come, there are a lot of people that come, but they're mostly all white people, like more than Palestinian people, more than Indians, any other, it's like, like yeah. there's a lot of Muslim people, but there's so many white people. Can and, I? Yeah, go. No, no, no. Go, 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 go. No, nah, go. Say what you can say. Bro, this I, I, I said this the other day. Yeah. This is why uh, we don't like Asian communities and Muslim communities don't get nowhere, bro. But it's it's not. 
I, I was gonna save it for a later part, yeah. But we we can go straight to it now, actually. But I feel like it's 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 not without reason because it, like I don't know about you, yeah. For example, when I when I like wanted when I was a kid and I wanted to like I was in like year ten or year eleven and I wanted to go to a protest, yeah. Do you know what I was told? It was I was told like if you go to any of these events, like your name will be put on a list. Do you know what I mean? And I'm I'm not saying that that's true or that's false, yeah. But it's 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 sort of like common knowledge that like. Um, outwardly expressing especially because you know how you were saying like a lot of white people go right i feel like sometimes uh, white people have the privilege to be outspoken without being seen as a threat do you know what i mean i'm not saying it's a good thing that our people don't go to these protests yeah but there is it's not without reason i feel like and I'm, it's a good thing that it's changing um because you know as we were saying before you're saying like oh, a lot more people are talking about it now I feel like it's really, really good that it's, it's not become tab- it's, it's going away from being taboo to speak about it. But we have to realize that for the for the people that came before us, it was taboo for them. Like people, Loki had his house raided so many times. Do you know what I mean? For, for you're the, right. You're right. You know what I mean? Like, go on. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I was just gonna finish off like um, what's called the the NUS student. We were just talking about just before off, off air. Uh, Malia Boatai. I, I don't know how to say her name because hmm. uh, I've never met her. But like she was like investigated by like Israeli officials and conspired against by her vice president and like ousted because just because she spoke up for Palestine and like I feel like people are really really scared especially if you want to be like if you because a lot of times you're more like into activism when you're educated right um and when you when when generally when when you when you become more educated you're more likely to be going into roles like being a doctor to being an engineer being a lawyer all these things and I feel like a lot of those people even though they're woke and they're they want to be active some of those careers they think like what if an employer sees this or like what if this negatively affects my career i'm not saying it's 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 it has justified but it is something to think about do you know what i mean but that's more that's more reason for people to do it anyway do you know what i'm saying you need to keep pushing these boundaries but i agree and also i i think obviously in in terms of people like loki and malia Bhatia, they, they're like super outspoken and mm. they'll they'll not just like toe the boundary they'll go past the boundary and mm. like they'll put themselves and they know what they're getting into but i feel like for the general pu- like public i guess i don't think activism needs to be that like if you go to a protest right now for at least in my opinion i don't think you would be put on a list yeah I, always- I, I, I don't think you will but then like, even, even then again before we were talking about how like you know when the queen came to you was it the queen i'm, I'm just gonna go with the queen because that's what i think <laughs> I remember the Queen. Where, yeah, so there was that event at, at King's where um, there was some important event. Let's yeah, say someone, it was the queen. someone important came, and uh, like basically really, really everyone, important. every student who was a member of uh, Friends of Palestine Society or the Palestinian Society there, they they had their cards um, banned for the day, basically. So yeah. they couldn't they couldn't enter their own uni stuff like that. So they they are you're right. Like maybe they are keeping tabs on this kind of stuff. But even, even like uh, prevent, do you know what I mean? Like we can't just ignore that. Speaking about Palestine falls under prevent. It must do. Like there's no, mm-hmm, yeah, and, and that's always been there before. And I think I saw Loki saying as well that the 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 the, the guy who was behind prevent um, is also one of the donors for these Israeli settler organizations. Is, is it called like Elad or something? The one that mm-hmm. um, unfortunately Roman Abramovich is also a part of. Uh, which is very infuriating, um, but we can talk about that a little bit later. Yes, um, sure. But yeah, I feel like it is important to remember that like people did do a lot of things. Like you know, there's the whole BDS. Like there's always more you can do, and there's always more we should be doing. Um, but I don't feel like we can be like to these people. Like, oh, you didn't do enough because yeah, they could do more, but um, we can't go back to the past and change that. All we can do now is go forward and be like, okay, now we can do this and now we can do that, uh, and also yeah. appreciate. So a lot of those people probably stuck their neck out for us to Agreed. be able to always so say like speak about it openly because I'm not gonna lie yeah, there was there's times where I thought today like you know we're having this podcast but I feel like this episode I feel like five years ago ten years ago I don't think this would be a I don't I wouldn't feel confident you know hundred percent even right now uh, even little stuff like when you post on your story I'm thinking like this is gonna be taken the wrong way this is gonna like and people people are gonna I don't, I, I don't repost anything that can be taken the wrong i'm v- like i feel like there's a lot of people that just like they see the words palestine they see the word israel and they like there is there is some things to be careful of do you know what i mean but yeah oh yeah um, i think it's like it's like everyone has a different 
like you said, everyone is comfortable with different things. And also everyone has a different um, sphere of influence, I guess. Like if you're, if you're someone who's, who needs to work in like, the corporate world and like that's your, yeah. then I understand like you don't want to jeopardize yeah, yeah. that for, for a cause. But then that doesn't mean that there's not stuff that they can do that is genuinely yeah, yeah. effective. I was going like, to say, like, at, at the end, we'll have, we'll have, like, I've got a list of stuff that you can do to be outspoken, but also things that you can do, like, behind the scenes, do you know what I mean? Behind, not, yeah, in a, yeah. not in a bookie way, before MI5 come for me, I mean, like, <laughs> in, in, like, a, like, a, a not, like, a way that you don't have to put your name out there, and you can help out. Um, 100%. Yeah. BDS, BDS is, yeah. is super. Someone, so, I saw someone saying that, like, um, boycotting was how, like, South Africa got out of their, their apartheid as well. Um, so yeah, BDS, Ooh, do, just... do you want to tell us what BDS is for those? Who so don't... BDS is boycott, divest, and sanctions campaign uh, targeted at companies which are complicit in um, the Israeli occupation of Palestine. So, so that involves like the, we can get a list of brands, but basically any any companies which either like individuals or companies which fund Israel. Um, stop, I can pull, stopping I can pull up a list their... as well. Yeah, hundred. Um, like to stop buying their goods and to like stop investing in things which are going to support those people. I feel like that is hell important. And there's ah, uh, we should get. We should also get like examples of where that's worked. There's so if you if you look at the BDS website as well, there's so many examples of people. Oh, for example, singers like a singer Lord in the, who sang Royals. She she um because of BDS pressure, she was going to perform in Israel and she pulled out of performing. Same with, and even though that seems like one isolated thing, that's like a big thing because now suddenly all her fan base and she's got millions of followers are like, whoa, she pulled out of Israel. That must be something serious. Yeah. And it's going to get people talking. And then Israel's government like suddenly looks bad on the international stage. And I'm, going to, I'm sure we're going to talk about it after, but like media wise, they're presented as some Holy girl. No, let's talk many, about it now, fam. Fuck. Look how many people they vaccinated. Bro, can, can I just say this, yeah? Sorry, I've been talking too much. No, no, no. The, the vaccination thing, it makes my blood boil because they are the country, according to BBC and that, that has vaccinated almost all of their population. But like, if you look at how many Palestinians have been vaccinated, bro, it's like 1% or some shit. So... Yeah. Whose citizens are they then? Because if they're if they're not if they're just according to BBC they're just Palestinians they're not people from the state of Palestine. Then they must be Israeli citizens. But then they have vaccinated all their citizens. There's five million people, eight million people that haven't. Yeah, That's some bullshit. Bro. And I, I think they they were they were trying to I saw some people trying to justify it by saying oh like those those the Palestinians refused the vaccination. Bro, come on come off that man. Who's gonna people are dying? Who's gonna refuse? vaccinations man. They, they've been holding up vaccines at Israel just like they hold up vaccines they hold up post bro do you know how much there's like pictures of how much post for Palestinians is collected at Israeli checkpoints well, and it hasn't been stuff. letters parcels everything like just from people elsewhere uh, outside the country bro for like seven years some people haven't received their posts <laughs> what the hell and they, they've held up vaccines and then finally they let like some tiny number like bear in mind there's how many? Two million people in Gaza. I think they let something like ten thousand vaccines in recently. What's that? Hundred thousand vaccines. What's that? Crazy man. It's crazy. I... <clears throat> it's yeah. It's one of those things where, as we were saying, like they have like a we uh, we can talk about it now. Actually, you're saying like how they have like this really like squeaky clean uh, image in the thing, and I think I think it's a lot to do with like how the media um, obviously uh, report on these issues as well. Like, oh, they, the, the Al-Aqsa attack, they call it like, oh, clashes between the, the Palestinians and the Israeli police. Bro, how are little kids? Was it nine children died on the first day or something? Mm. So the, that's actually, there was airstrikes. That's even worse because there's airstrikes right now in, in Gaza. Yeah. So when, when these things happen, um, Hamas and Israel like started basically like engaging in I guess like firing rockets and stuff and yeah. Israeli obviously they Israeli side they have they're hella militarized one and they of have the like most, something called like the Iron Dome or something like that. yeah so they can block any rocket attack 
But yeah. more than that, they can their precision with drones and everything is the best, one of the best in the world. Like they're supplied by American military, Russian military, whatever, Indian, Indian um, and British military manufacturers apparently, and British. Apparently, they approved one point seven million worth of arms. Yeah, exactly, bro. Do you know some crazy thing? Israel receives every year three the most. Uh, the country that America gives the aid to the most in the whole world is Israel. Not not some country which is in poverty or something. Israel. Every year they get three three point eight billion every year. Yearly, yearly. And and yeah, every year. And uh, there's some like rule that most of that has to be spent on American military equipment. So basically, they're just oh giving them money gosh. so they can spend it back on to their private military firms. So yeah. We've, so I'm we've, saying we've war is profitable, man. Do you know what I mean we've we've known we've known this for a long time? Like, um, you know, why why do you think? Well, obviously, well, I know you guys know, but like, obviously, why do people think? You know, what's happening in Yemen never gets any airtime at all. Do you mm. know what I mean because who's supplying the the arms to Saudi Arabia, the UK, Bro, and the US? They, it would cost them so much for that war to end. Like, there was oh, there was again this there's one I did at uni. Yeah, it was like in a, a smaller country. Yeah. And it was it was Chomsky who was doing like an investigation into it, yeah. Well, a guy, by the way, people should read his. his stuff. Yeah, Chomsky. We did, we did Chomsky in English as well, AV, for like uh, language acquisition. <laughs> you think I remember that? <laughs> what? But yeah, you're right. Actually, just on a side note, yeah. What well, guy? We learned about him when we were learning about how babies, le- how babies and humans learn to speak. And then at uni, I learned about him like investigating literal wars as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, sick guy. Sick guy. Anyway, sorry. What were you saying? But yeah, there was. Oh, I, I'm gonna look up the. I'm gonna hopefully look up the the place. Or, it was like a, a place where, um, like the the country was. It was a civil. I think it was a civil war, but like the country was heavily, heavily involved in war, and it was like all peak. And he he was checking how much like coverage it got in the UK media, and I think throughout the whole war, I think they mentioned it nine times or something, and it was in a space of like. A year or so or something like that and then he was like okay cool so why why is this happening and then he found out that okay cool the uk is supplying them with is selling weapons to the to the aggressors yeah, and that's why what was this um it was a long time ago that i learned about it uh and the thing is I'll, I'll, you know when you want to google it you know Trump, he has like. so much about him do you know what i mean like i know it's not the iraq war because i typed in war but like it comes up with iraq war. i know it wasn't that I think it's something beginning with T. Uh, but he's too like, he's too bored in it. Like it'll be hard to find uh, the war. But if I if I find it in another episode, I will let you know. If I find no, it. yeah, I think that's an important narrative. Like, because usually when we see things in the media and the because everyone can see, like it's so obvious that the way they report Western or white deaths is different to the way they report brown deaths. But like, oh. and, yeah, we can put that down to racism. But actually, there's all these interests involved. You get me? Like, there's there's reasons it's not just it is racism but it's also actual people's financial interests that are saying you can't you can't call it um israel bombs gaza you have to call it there were clashes how are children involved in clashes like you said yeah and oh, I was gonna say that, but wait, what, what did you say again uh, i said i, I said about I address something but i forgot what it was about the the racism in the media oh yeah yeah so there was um I need, to, I need to start writing the, these figures down yet, yeah, but I saw this, this woman was like, when, it, when like a Muslim commits an act of terrorism in the UK, it gets, I hope this figure is right, yeah, but it was 758% more airtime than an, like a, a white non-Muslim person committing an act of terror. I was like, I knew it was bad, but 758% is like, I, I don't even know that's mathematically possible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like obviously there is race there is racism that underpins it as well but it's like it's even more than the racism it's like actual people's interests which is very scary man yeah and just going off that as well like you were talking about like how like the media they don't just do it for it's it's not for fun there's always obviously a reason behind it um and i think that can lead us onto one one particular topic that I want to talk about and that was um why why Middle Eastern or Muslim movements don't make it that far in, in the West. Uh, because I have seen a lot of oh, idiots here, yeah, idiots here. Yeah. 
they'll jump online and be like, oh, where was the energy f- that you had for BLM when it comes to Palestine? Because it's, it's so dumb for so many reasons. Yeah, and before, I'm just going to drop a couple of the reasons why I think it's dumb here. Number one, what do you mean by that? Because what you're insinuating is that somehow the media and the people in the West somehow favour black people. But we know that to not be true, right? Do you know what I mean? Because people will be like, no, that's not, that's not what I'm insinuating. But that is what, that's what that statement means. Like, they must be favoured somehow, but they're not favoured. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, we wouldn't have anti-blackness, we wouldn't have racism, we wouldn't have colorism and stuff like that. And there would be no need for a Black Lives Matter movement in the first place if they were favoured. One by second, the one second. I literally just saw a stat here that the UK government has sold 380 million in weapons to Israel in the last five years. Please go on, please continue. And then we wonder why they don't report you. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so so is like to all those people that say that, is that what you, is that what you want to insinuate? That they're somehow favored because they're not? Do you know what I mean? Like we know we know that already. Um and secondly, it's just so dumb because every time that happens, yeah, your timeline goes from talking about what's happening in Palestine and how we can help and what what why is it happening? What can we can do to help? All that stuff, all the good stuff that we need to talk about in it. Um, and it goes from that to people then just comparing opp- oppression, basically going into um, oppression o- Olympics, because then it just becomes like, oh, why did you say this? Why did you say that? Um, you're more oppressed than me. I'm more oppressed than you. When really, like, you're taking the whole discourse away from what really needs to be spoken about. Do you know what I mean? And I, I, just because. So I know I said I had too, too many reasons why it's annoying yeah, but there's actually so many reasons why it's annoying. <laughs> because another point is like people, because I remember one time I said that, I said like, why, like what's the need to say that? And this guy commented on my video. He was like, oh, um, I'm not going to support people who don't support me. And I just think like, if your activism is transactional, then fuck off. We don't need it. Nobody needs yeah, it. That's... Do you know what I mean? Like if, 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 if I help out AB, I'm not going to expect him to help me back. He probably will because he's my friend in it. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be like yo A B, remember that time I, I helped you out, like and now you're not helping me out. Do you know what I mean? Like that's wet, bro. Do you know what I mean? Do you know how wet that is to sit there and be like, oh I helped you out and hold it over his head. Yeah, Andrew. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no we don't need that. I, I, I would like add one caveat though, which is if I fully agree with it, with everything what you said, and people like racist people, um, people who are like in charge of this discourse they will be licking their lips when they see when they see people infighting amongst themselves people that are they are pressing both of them and now they're fighting yeah amongst man they will, they will be loving it but I, I would say that like if you're a kind of what i was talking about earlier if, if if i was a palestinian and i saw and like say i i've like been shouting about all all kind of human rights issues which a lot of like people who, who are oppressed they would do right um but then if if I see like there's silence from everyone else, I can see how that I would become salty, even though like I don't agree with it. But but for for general people who are like I don't know personally, I I come from um, like a Hindu background, and for me, I'm tired of the the people wanting to play like a, a victim card sometimes, and like yeah. always want the the discourse to turn about them what about this what about i'm tired yeah. of that but like, i can see how some people might get drained and just feel like what about what about my cause Let, let's not get twisted though like i agree you know when you said like they they, they can get drained out by yeah I f- do you know I mean? all those people who say like oh um where was the energy that you had for blm and stuff yeah i feel like the sentiment is right they're just directing at the wrong people because yeah it's, it's, it's not the fault of black people it's not the fault of the organizers of blm they're not taking up any space there's, there's yeah, multiple yeah, space right. to be had it's just a part of that space in the uk media or the us media or like uk U- us narrative is locked off and not available to middle eastern and muslim issues and because of these reasons not because of black people but it's because of you know it is frustrating to see your movement not get traction do you know what i mean but directed at the right people and the right people would be like <clears throat> Everyone, everyone in the US, do you know what I mean, regardless of race, religion, um, ethnicity, gender, all that stuff. Because me and AB were speaking about it a couple of weeks ago. The Islamophobia in the US is so bad that there's so many Muslims that are Islamophobic. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's like, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? So, 
it's, 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 it might be one for a long episode, but like basically what we were saying is like, because you know, like in the UK, Islamophobia is bad, right? Uh, but it can be quite hidden from you and it can be quite like far away from you. Like you don't see it. It doesn't really affect you unless you go online and then you see people like daily mail comments and stuff like that. In the US, I feel like it's everywhere. Do you know what I mean? And then so, so far so that you'll get like, even with small things where like they won't have halal meat just because it won't be readily available to them and they don't feel, they feel the need to sort of hide um things that make them visibly muslim or outwardly muslim just to like mm. fit fit in do you know what i mean like for example you could you could go on twitter yeah obviously you're not muslim brag yeah but imagine you go on twitter yeah tomorrow and say like um as a muslim you should pray five times a day and yet in your location you have london england yeah so they know that you're from london and then all these u.s muslims will come be like oh telling me to pray five times a day look at isis twitter look at isis twitter do you know what i mean what and it's hell? like what like such an overreaction and i used to laugh at it yeah but then i clocked like it's not their fault do you know what I mean? um, by the way this is not this i'm kind of generalizing it there's a lot of like religious muslims yeah, in yeah. The us yeah but there are a lot of people who feel like they need to get rid of some values just because they don't want to be which is like, sad because yeah it's like they've been molded into that because yeah. of the racism around them yeah so yeah as i was saying like Islamophobia plays a big part in the fact why uh, Middle East and, and when we talk about Middle Eastern issues, it's all to do with like the war and terror, because if you look at all the propaganda and all the justification for the war and terror, there is no way that you can be sympathetic to the, the Middle East in 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 the US if you follow like mainstream media and if you if you follow everything they say. Because imagine, bro, Sopranos is one of my favorite shows. Yeah, I'm going to drop some spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched it, which is YouTube in it. <laughs> But it doesn't matter. There's, in the Sopranos, the main character is a, is a mafia boss in it, and he's obvi- he obviously as a mafia like a gangster. He does unspeakable things in it, like kill people. I thought they were unspeakable. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It, like he does her- horrific. This guy's a snitch. Like, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like oh extorts money from people. All these all these things are like very very bad things, right? Uh, and then in the in the later episodes, there's one arc here where there's like in his club there's like two muslim characters and they slowly introduce to you as like first at first all they all they all you know about them is that they have muslim names but other than that they are very american and they and they come from another country and that's it so you're like the way they're presented is like oh you need to be suspicious of them and stuff like that um and then he like he becomes suspicious of them so like obviously you follow along with the main character so you start to become suspicious of them and then like deep this guy is a is is a is a a criminal he's not a good person do you know what i mean at the end of the day and he's wanted by an fbi agent and then slowly he starts giving information about the muslims even though they haven't done anything to the fbi agent and he doesn't even do it to get a deal or anything he just does it because he feels like he owes it to his country so it's, it's like this what narrative that, like even this mafia boss gangster who's like the worst of the worst is, is is fighting for their country in some way against muslims and then in the end the muslims do turn out to be terrorists in the end of well. course uh, and yeah like and it, I, I don't know just painted that picture in my head that like they were trying to go for you know uh being in the mafia is relatable and it's better than yeah. being in the thing do you know even I mean? that like what we were talking about the all of these are intentional decisions by someone less car they didn't need to do that like that's like someone's idea less cast two muslims let's make them suspicious let's make them into terrorist characters and that's the only depiction you'll see of muslims in these kind of shows which is that's, yeah yeah it's more than the media it's like it's everywhere i can see how that happened of, about muslims being Islamophobic. yeah do you know what i mean so that's what that's why i think these movements don't make it far in in the west because you know nobody is sympathetic to those causes um as a as an outsider though like in terms of not being muslim i mean um yeah. one thing which I've seen a lot of, like on on Instagram especially, is is people saying, "Oh, um, how can you like you lot are Muslim and you're not posting about or you're not talking about Palestine stuff like that?" Hmm. Well, what do you what do you lot think about this? Like, uh, for example, people people like, "Oh, you lot, uh, how can you be Pakistani and then not talk, you, not talk about you know Palestine and you're killing your country and stuff like that?" Similar to like the the BLM comparisons, in my opinion shaming people into activism is a bit 
sus to me. No, I don't mean like making feel people pe- making people feel guilty, because that's what like the video should do, and that's what like knowing about something that you haven't been speaking about should make you feel guilty, right? Uh, but go- you know, going out there because even though we don't like to admit it, humans have a lot of pride. Do you know what I mean if if I if 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 you've never heard about like let's say all the Kyojins out there are being like uh, targeted in it. And Prague, you've never heard about it. And I just come on the street and be like, yo, why are you not talking about us? Huh? Do you know what I mean? Like you're going to feel, you're going to feel like, what the hell? Do you know what I mean? Cause it, obviously there are some people that know the things and don't post. And that's, that can be a bit weird to me personally, but <clears throat> you never know. Some people might just not know about these things and it's your duty to like go and teach them these things and stuff like but that. then is it not first go, go, on. go on now go ahead no, no i think we're gonna make the same point about gone no, 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 i want to hear from you Alf, bro. Your but there's no way there's the past few days that anyone has oh, was, everyone's been posting it like yeah, you know what i'm saying i, I still be... don't think you should shame people into it do you know what i mean uh, you no, know when I, I when when i say that though like if if you're someone who like regularly posts about issues yeah and you choose not to post about then i like i think you're a dickhead do you know what I mean, because then I know you that's what you use your platform for. If it's somebody who never posts on their story, yeah, yeah. But for me, even if you if you're posting about it's not just if you're posting about other other acti- topic activism topics and not about Palestine, yeah, obviously that's very strange. But even people who just don't post about things politically at all, I feel like if I if I had a following like and you're not trying to use that for the right purpose, I feel like that is a bit shameful. I, I, even I though I'm not that. like I know it's wrong to judge people, but when these things are going on, and if you can do something so little about it, and you're not doing that, I feel like maybe like shaming is a way of I giving agree. people a wake up call. Do you get me? I agree. I, but I, what I, I don't get is people though. And what I don't get is see like all these people are like oh yeah DJ Khaled DJ Khaled. This dickhead dropped a, a Lord knows how many track album. Yeah, during, during Ramadan he used a prayer mat. And, he, and to on the album cover, uh, Kyoja told me that man had a, a Quran in the in the background on the album cover. And on top of that, bro, man, man listed a lot as an executive producer on the album. What? Yeah, fam. Fam, and he, and you're asking this guy to talk about political issues, bro. Furthermore, he he's the face of um, you're called out, you know, by uh, Kony Kardashian's man. You know, this is a famous model. He called he he added him on his story. He's like. DJ Khaled, I see you. Why are you not speaking about your people for this is your country? Really? Like, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but see, do you not think like that's powerful? Like, no, but DJ Khaled is, you know, when you said have a following, yeah? I don't think you should shame your friends. Do you know what I mean? Or like shame people you don't know on the internet kind of thing. Or, or like, I just feel like speaking in a condescending manner all the time is, is not conducive agreed, to that people agreed. think. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, for example, you know, when people say like, I hate, I hate when people start off activism with, why is no one talking about this? Because you are talking about it. And that should inspire other people to talk about it. Don't stop blaming people for not talking about it when you're the first to talk about it. It's calm. I mean, introduce it to your circle and get it to spread. I feel like with, I with feel like being people, accusatory is, 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 is not helpful, in my opinion. But it's like not like individual. People, sorry, sorry, I keep... No, 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 go on, go on, go on, go on. But are you going to remember? Because I'll remember mine. No, I'll, I'll definitely remember mine. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It starts with some people. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, no, I remember. Ah, oh, shit, I forgot. Now you go, you go, you go. <laughs> you go, you go, you go. Well, after all that, fam. So, what I was going to say is that some, I feel like with some people, yeah, it's like, so they use their platforms to talk about the things and they're like, it's like, it's like them holding a banner. You're like, hey, guys, I'm, I'm supporting this. Hey, guys, you could do this to help out. Hey, guys. And they get no airtime. And then, do you know what I'm saying? I feel like, Right now, it's like a where, where emotions are high. It just boils over. Do you get me? Like, oh, bro, like, it's like, you know what I'm saying, bro? It's like, it's like, you, you could, it's like, you, you can even do that it's like with us, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Imagine, like, if, if I was doing that, um, like saying, yo, guys, they just support this, they support this cause, it's a, it's a good cause, and no one's hearing about it. And now you're seeing this happen. Do you know what I'm saying? You're going to feel yeah, like, yeah, I, like, I think, I think that's you know the saying? reality. Like, the in- internet's don't... too big for that, though, man. But internet, people don't cause, necessarily, because your bubble is not always someone else's bubble. No, but I'm I mean, no, but I'm saying that in the wider in the wider context. I'm just bringing it home for us, so it's more relatable. But imagine someone on Twitter who's got like a decent following and is using their platform to do this. It doesn't have to be a decent following. They can have any sort of following. You know what I'm I saying? I think it's, it's, it's just it's just human psychology, though. Nobody wants to be accused. Nobody wants to be shamed. They're more likely to turn off. Like the whole thing with like 
people making comparisons like, oh, where's the energy for this and where's the energy for that? Yeah, did the conversation turn into anything conducive? It all I don't agree with that. People I, you, beef each other, but it's in the same vein though. Because yeah, I don't, I don't beef yeah, each I don't, other, and then if you if you say stuff like, oh, why is no one talking about this yet? I guarantee you, someone is gonna blow off saying, why are you talking about it? Do you know what I mean? It's gonna turn into a whole thing. Where I think there's a there's a fine balance though. Like I agree, I agree with the where's like why are you talking about this? But or comparing movements that I feel like that is not productive. But also I disagree with you about the human psychology thing because I think. If you see, like what A.B. was saying, if you see people posting kind of like, oh, let's do this in a positive light, yeah, it will get like some clicks, but people people maybe will just scroll past it. Like if it's a fundraiser, some people will donate, a lot of people will scroll past it. But if it's like something in your face, like even you can, not, you can, not just can, on social media, bro. Like though, without, without people, being accusatory though, in my opinion. But it's not like accusatory in a... In a personal way, it's not. No one's. No one's saying. No every, one's saying every, every, everyone read things. Everyone reads things in a personal way. Like there's no way you don't go on the internet and don't read things. Like obviously there is. That no, but like the thing about Muslim about Muslims, for example, like it, I've seen a lot of me. I, I disagree with that, by the way, but for a different reason. We'll come back to after. Okay, like say say that say there's a post like yeah. I've seen it a lot. Oh, um, we are like failing the Ummah kind of thing. Like by yeah. by staying silent about these things and as Muslims, like what are we doing? Like why aren't we talking about this? I feel like if I was Muslim, even I'm not Muslim, I feel like that's powerful for me. So I feel like if I was Muslim, I would be like, I would reevaluate why I'm why I'm staying distant the, from such a the 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 umma umma's failing part. Yeah, I agree with that. But even even then, I feel like sometimes it's it's, it's not it's not needed. It's like it's it's like when people are giving dawah and, and the sheikh is, is is screaming at someone. I mean, like it's 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 not. I don't think it's for everyone. I mean, I feel like there needs to be a good mix of. Yeah, some people need a good kick up the backside, but generally, I don't think people need to feel ashamed or accused or anything, because uh, the thing is, you want them on your side. You don't want to shun them away. Hmm. And then just the part that you were saying about like, like people saying like, oh, as a Muslim, you should do this. Muslims do that. I don't think we can forget that. Like, obviously. There are a lot of Palestinian Christians as well. We can't mm-hmm. just erase them from the whole narrative. Andrew, Andrew. Do you know what I mean? Like the Israeli government and the Israeli forces have uh, also attacked the, the church in East Jerusalem as well on Easter Sunday. Um, really? So it's, I didn't it's, know that. it's really, really important to like for us to not also not make it like a, a Muslim versus Jews thing because it isn't that. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I, 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 was, I was also going to say this in a later part as well, but like I think one, one part where sometimes passion can be very very negative is that like a lot of young people or a lot of young they don't know who to direct their energy at do you know what i mean like i i know like there's so many people that like uh, the thing is i don't want to say something mad because then it'll be clipped in it i don't want to give you an example but like they'll they'll direct a lot of hatred towards jewish people do you know what i mean whereas when well, that's very misplaced there's a lot of jewish people who support palestine there's a lot of people jewish people who are anti-zionist and when you're young, I feel like there's a lot of Muslims, especially Muslim boys and stuff like that, will just be like, fuck, da, 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 you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to say it at all, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I feel like that is very, very harmful because then it just adds to that. You know how, like, in especially in UK politics, like, um, anti-Zionism is conflated with anti-Semitism. Those people are not helping when they actually do it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%, 100%. Also, yeah. I would add, like, on, on anti-Semitism, I feel like even... Jewish people who are not um, anti-Zionist, that doesn't make them a legitimate like target of of any kind of like Big targeted shit. activism or some shit like that. That for me that is still anti-Semitism. Um, but what mustn't be the case, which is what always is the case, uh, is that the as soon as there's an anti-Zionism conversation, suddenly it's it's hijacked by an anti-Semitism conversation. And for me call that out is not anti-semitism because yeah but that's the way it's become and even like a bunch of universities in the uk they recently adopted um a motion which basically changed the definition of what is anti-semitism to include um any criticism of of the state of israel and their government's actions yeah so i think in ucl either it's already been rescinded or it's like in the process of getting appealed or something, but like, I know a lot of unis have adopted that now. Yeah, so that it's, basically it's international, shut, you know? it shuts down activism yeah. because it shuts down any talking about Palestine, basically. Because how can you talk about Palestinians being oppressed without talking about who's oppressing them? It makes no sense. 
it, it makes everything basically questionable if that makes sense which is yeah. which is so dangerous because then like you can't imagine you're running a Palestinian society or something and you want to get a speaker yeah. in now you, they, they thing can, very very recent yeah they can monitor you they can ask you questions like who's this person da, da, more than they can with any other society wait it's, did you just say that was on UCO yeah it's, it's, it's the international King, definition bro UCL rejected it. Oh, they, oh, okay, okay, okay. So they initially yeah. accepted it, and then there was there was uh, an appeal. Well, by the students or something. Or... Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then it went to, so it's, it's... Yeah, that's crazy. So, so... and the so. Go on. And I was the, I was gonna say what what we can do to help. The, so the I just off that, and it's it's not like just from the 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 from Ira or all the unis themselves. The government well, let me just make sure he's gavin williamson the secretary education mm. secretary and the government they friend sanctions against any uni who like fails to adopt that definition so if you don't take that definition into your, into account you there's a possibility of you getting sanctioned um by the government basically you can see why it's so hard to like direct your activism in the right place as well 100%. When, when all of these forces are at play, like, are you going to direct it at the uni, but then they're constrained by the government? Like, yeah. And yeah. I, I think it has to be said as well, yeah? Like, I really, really feel sorry for, like, just everyday Jewish people because their existence has been so politicised. Do you know what mm. I mean? When you, look at, when you look at, there are a lot of people that support Jeremy Corbyn from the Jewish community. But they were heavily politicized by mm. the, the by the news, by the media, by the by the Conservative Party, by people both inside ways. the Labour Party as well. Yeah, both ways, I mean, yeah. in both in both ways, like people, like there'll be people who like paint them as like all oh, these terrible people when they're just human beings. Do you know what I mean, trying to live, um, and then there'll be people who will like use their struggles as like a as like political power, basically. Like, oh, this person didn't do enough to do this. So obviously, we know we were talking about Jeremy Corbyn in it. Um, it's crazy, and it is it is sad, yeah. Because I remember when I realized it was so heavily politicized. Yeah, I I always talk about this one interview that I feel like I, I don't, did you guys vote in the the local elections recently? The election, yeah, of course. Recently? I didn't vote. I can't lie. Nico, I'm Elana. Come on. Yeah, come on, man. You have to. You have to. They got beauty YouTube as well, my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> No, I'm joking, I'm joking. But do you know why I didn't vote for him? It's like... Oh, I, I was yeah. struggling to find, a, find, find who to vote for, you know. I, can't I probably would have voted for Sadiq Khan, I can't lie. Um, but I was just, I felt like politically burnt out because uh, this interview just killed me, innit? It was right after the, was it 2019 elections? The last election, or 2018, I can't remember. 2019, I think, yeah. Yeah, 2019. And then Boris Johnson won, and there's a, there's a correspondent standing outside saying that like, Boris Johnson won. And Kay Burley, the Sky News reporter, she's there, she's like, Oh, it's, you know, it's a really, really good day. Um, Jeremy Corbyn didn't get in. I'm thinking, first of all, you're a news reporter. Like, you, you can't be that biased. What the hell? And the guy's like, oh, you know, but Boris Johnson got in, and he's he's a uh, he's been racist. He's been he said homophobic things. Oh yeah, things. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. He's 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 talking about women in burkas. He's talked about black people and the the watermelon smiles or whatever that thing as well. All those comments that he made, and she listened to all of that yet yeah, and goes, but he's not anti-Semitic though. And I was like. That's when I was just like, yeah, she's so like, at least, were, at least, at least not Andy Samir because I'm, yeah. I was, I was just thinking, like, so every, all of that is okay, but there's one con- condition where you won't accept, which obviously you shouldn't, or 100% you shouldn't accept anti Semitism, yeah, but all the other ones are, are unacceptable yeah. as well, yeah, I mean, 100%. And then I, I, I think this country don't care about us like that. I, I agree with you that, like, right now, I feel politically burnt out too, but then, especially with that, I said, yeah. Huh? Yeah, Starmer. I learned that from Muhammad Hijab. Pussy lamus. Pussy what malanus. That? What does that mean? I don't know. I heard it of Muhammad Hijab. He's like, you are but, pussy malanus. No, but despite that, I don't think we can... I feel like I don't think not voting is the answer. I can't lie. you got to keep going, bro. Even, this, yeah. Bro, like, even if there's a chance of making things a bit better or compared to making things a lot worse, I feel like you still have to choose yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's I, making I, things I, a I bit worse, vote, then, I will vote again, like in a general election, but this just this 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 election, I was just like, first yeah. of all, I was I was fasting, so I was tired. I don't want to leave my house. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not calling you up, but I'm, I'm just saying. No, no, I'm just just saying like why I didn't vote in it. Yeah. And then also, I just felt like, I, don't know, I just felt burnt out, man. 
I mean? Because the whenever I feel like that, the way I see it is like, imagine if I don't. Obviously, voting is is very inconsequential when you think about. It, but also, like if I don't vote, and then that leads to, or if people, a lot of people don't vote, and that leads to a Tory mayor coming in. Mm. what is London going to be like? What is going to happen to free travel? Like, what is going to happen to young people and free school meals and this and that? Like, there's there's so many knock-on effects of not voting. So that's... Wait, that's so why. who won? Sadiq Khan. Sadiq Khan vote. Who won? He follows me on Twitter, you know. Is I, it? I, yeah, but he follows bare people. From you didn't vote for him. Bro tell, it, bro, tell him to come onto the pod, fam. <laughs> Big man, that would be sick. Bro, no, tell he, him to come he, on. He, he follows me on Twitter. I think he just follows bare people who, like, support support him i can't like because you know like you know when people like will be like oh the, the stabbing the another stabbing in london oh, sadiq khan's fault like is he batman fam or what is he meant to do fam yeah. do you know what i mean this guy can't he can't be every, he's not like yeah a one, do you know what i mean uh, and yeah. they're not like the mayor has that much power over policies like he still answers to the prime minister which is tory still budget cuts from the tory austerity still comes down from the tory government mm. you know Bro, drop him a DM. That's sick. No, no, but he follows. He, bro, he follows very the man. Dude. My I'm, friend is friends with the mayor. I love. No, no, but I'm preg. I'm telling you, if you if you were still on Twitter, he'd follow you as well. You know what I mean, oh, I'm dude. like, I'll go. I'll I can go on his account now, yeah. And we'll probably see so many different like mutual followers. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And That's also, you know who else follows me? <laughs> John Cena. <laughs> that is a count. John Cena. <laughs> Yo, what do you mean, John Cena follows you? John Cena follows me. What do you mean? No, he doesn't. Well, I John Cena follows me. Bullshit. Look, so all right, here's um Sadiq Khan. It disappears in it. No way. Sadiq Khan follow me, and then there's John Cena, and I think they follow each other. So. What the fuck? What? What? Wait, what is happening? <laughs> what? What? Why is this group chat that we're not in for? Did this a link up that? I, I... <laughs> John Cena follows me. But then I'm feeling like John Cena follows better than Mandem as well. Bro, Why imagine, does... no, imagine we get John Whoa. Cena and Sidi Khan on a podcast, fam. And what the same episode? Bro, that would be crazy. I'm telling you, John Cena follows better than Mandem, fam. How did me. John Cena find someone from ENDS? I don't know. I must have, I must have just it. tweeted about him once or something, innit? Yeah, he, he follows me. He follows better than Mandem. Do you know what I mean? And I also have, like, so obviously, you know, like, because of the. Um, the iftar, iftar TikTok that we made last year, innit? obviously, there's a journalist who follows me, and she's really cool and stuff here. Yeah, but I always feel like I'm like, I have to be very professional on my, on my Twitter, Jamie, because there's like a, nah. a politician, a WWE superstar, and a journalist following me on, tic- on Twitter. Bro, they're, not, they're not following you for your professionalism, bro. Jamie, what are they following me for me, for me saying, for me saying, Mason Mount, go, <laughs> let's go. Because <laughs> that's all I tweet these days. I say, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> But I was the that's so to bring it back to the obviously situation in Palestine, yeah, that was another reason. I was, I was very annoyed the other day. I went on TikTok and I saw that um, Roman Abramovich, I can't remember the figure, I think it was like 100 million, 130 million. He donated that to one of the um, settler organizations in Israel uh, to fund people moving from the US to Israel and uh, to Palestine. Oh, don't know why I said that to Palestine. Um, to take people's homes, and I, 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 it made me sad. I can't lie because obviously with all the Super League stuff going on, people hate the owners, isn't it? But anyone who knows Chelsea knows that Roman Abramovich is a good owner. Do you know what I mean? Like he has done so much for the club. For it's the just club, made yeah. me look at it like, you know what I mean? But I can't lie. It, it just puts things into perspective in terms of like, yeah, we love football, and football is a huge part of our life. But like, and this goes with other BDS as well. Like, yeah, clothes is a big part of our life. Like the food we eat is a big part of our life. But then when this is happening and the decisions yeah. we're making are like contributing to it, I feel like we have yeah. to step back and think like, what do what really matters to us? Really? Yeah, because people were saying like, are you, are you going to stop supporting them? So I cancelled my membership uh, just because I feel like I'm paying a yearly fee, even if it's like with inconsequential like, uh, with Chelsea. Um, oh. Because I feel like even if it is just what ten pound a year, I, it still doesn't sit morally right with me. And by the way, this is not me saying because people are saying, "Are you going to support Chelsea or not?" Yeah, the players, the club, they're all still like they're all still Chelsea. Do you know what I mean? And Roman Abramovich, yeah, he's still it's it's, it's weird to say because he's still a good 
I just don't support what he's doing as his really says and, and all those things. And it's also, you know, the UK's fault as well for like forcing him out. And then it's, uh, obviously he has agency of his own. You know, he, he funded that. Um, but I think the point I wanted to make here is that people were using that to point score against football fans. But yes, using the ethnic yes, cleansing of, of, of a whole group of people, a whole country of people, is not, is not for point scoring against football fans. Because if you want to go there, Arsenal also sent money, like the actual club itself. But w- what is the need to, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, they've pulled out of it now, so it's, ca- it's calm. Um, the Glazers and um, Liverpool's owners, there's Ines as well, do you know what I mean? Like, there's, it's, it's, it's sad because you realise that everywhere you go, there is something that, that you disagree with. Um, but it's yeah. not the right thing to point score between people. Do you know what I mean? I hate it, I hate it at all times. Do you know what I mean? Like when you know when like there's like a say if there's a Liverpool fan that's been racist on TV or something here, yeah, and people be like, oh, it's always the Liverpool fans. Shut up, man. Like, yeah, it's, like I, I don't I don't think necessarily like obviously you would feel so you would probably maybe like feel conflicted when but I don't think necessarily being a Chelsea fan being an Arsenal fan should make you feel guilty. Like I I think there's a difference between doing an action just for your own peace of mind and doing it for like a purpose that's going to affect Palestine so, mm. so like if I would, if, I would feel like, worse if I was a United fan though uh, I'll tell you why because if, uh, I said I won't point score yeah like, <laughs> I was gonna say that. but we personally we haven't made uh, Abramovich any money it's all his money that he already has we haven't made him any profit mm. the Glazers have sucked money out of United, so that is. I feel like that is more. Mm. Arguably, you know, I, I would feel worse because th- that w- then I would know that my my shirt sales have gone to, have definitely gone to, funding. Jamie, you know I mean? are you right? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, whereas with Chelsea, there's it, there is some sem- semblance of relief where I know that like, I, obviously I've kept him afloat. Do you know what I mean? But there's no big. And like, arguably, no Chelsea that. like legitimizes him because obviously he has shady. His money has shady connections, and I said like Chelsea. Chelsea is a way of making his his money legit. But yeah, anyway. But the point is like, if you were to if you were to stop supporting Chelsea, I don't think that like I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that that's yeah. relevant. It doesn't help anything. Like yeah. it's like let's, imagine let's, going on, let's, going let's on a hunger twisted, strike. Though. Imagine going on a hunger strike and not telling anyone. <laughs> just like for a cause it's, it's, it doesn't make sense but like if you were to if Chelsea fans together were to like all oh, yeah that's what, that's what I was thinking I was, I was thinking to myself like oh okay because you know when I was cancelling my membership yeah I was thinking to myself will I ever get it again and then I was also thinking to myself like if I had a big following and I could get people together with me and say like okay we're going to make a financial dent on this club to say yo we don't support what the owner is doing then it would be there would be some point behind in it Right now, I'm just doing it for my own peace of mind because I don't feel morally okay with it. Um, but in terms of doing it for an actual, as you said, doing it for an actual purpose, there is no purpose in that way other than me feeling good about myself. Yeah, and realistically, it's irrational like feel bad about yourself for supporting a club because if you, because yeah. if you, if you wanna, if if we wanna like live in a perfect way, every single thing that we do right now is in, unethical in some way. And it's unrealistic to like expect ourselves to to live perfectly without doing anything which is going to harm someone. But it's about like within what we have and like what circumstances we have, how can we best help people? That's the way I like to think of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like people people were like in those posts, people were like tagging uh, Ngolo Kante and and Ziyech saying like you need to leave Chelsea. I'm like, what? No, they don't. Like, this is nonsense. You're you're. You're too optimistic, one, and also impractical as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's not going to happen. Yeah. 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 Uh, like, there's so much energy and activism, and a lot of it is well meaning, but I wish we could just like channel it into channel something. Channel it. Like, that's BDM. What, that's what, like, what you, what, you know, before when we were saying, like, oh, people are like, sometimes people are, take their frustration out on BLM and stuff, yeah. I always think, like, first of all, I, I think AB said this on another episode, you know, they didn't start last week. They started a long, long time ago, 2013, and they were slowly, slowly making a lot of noise until they weren't, they weren't able to be, they weren't, they couldn't be ignored, right? And mm. I think when, when, when you say like, oh, 
where was that energy? You treat it like a a, a, a one summer trend because it's not a one summer trend. It was that is, it was happening for a long time, and that's not me saying, by the way, that the pro-Palestine movement hasn't been happening for a long because it's been happening for a long time. Isn't it? Long, yeah, um, long, long. Um, but that it hasn't worked because of the reasons that we spoke before about like mm. the war on terror and uh, Islamophobia and stuff like that. But they also people should instead of like demonizing black people and, and BLM, say like, are there any methods that the people behind BLM have done? That we can also ad- adopt or like adapt and, and say like we okay this is a good way we did this we can unify like this because I think mm. one comment I wanted to address was you know you said it is quite divided um, and I think whereas BLM can be quite is quite unified like African American people maybe because there's a smaller percentage of people they're all able to come together and say you know we don't fuck with this we fuck with this we don't fuck with that and it, that's why their voices are louder but I don't know if you wanted to go into more detail about that yeah so it's like it's weird because almost black people's experience, I guess, is like kind of more collective than yeah, black people's experience of oppression. I mean, is kind of more collective than Muslim people's experience of oppression, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, there's so many, or and not just for Muslim, because yeah, I don't know. I don't think. No, no, I get what you mean. Like, so, like, obviously, you, uh, uh, free Palestine is viewed as a largely Muslim thing. But that's the problem. Like all of these, okay, I'll give a perfect example, which is how how silly this idea of like only protesting for yourself and only transactionally is, is like in in India, um, so many people were turning a blind eye to what the Indian government is doing to Muslims there, like in, in Kashmir and stuff. And then farmers in India, Indian farmers, Hindu farmers, Sikh farmers, they, by the way, Sikh people rate it because, and a lot of Hindu people as well, like, because they, they were even supporting the Kashmiri people. But a lot of people were turning a blind eye to it until the government starts targeting them. And suddenly now it's like, oh, wait, I, they, were, they were so blind. Like, the same things that would affect other people are going to affect them as well. But people are, people are short sighted. So, yeah, I feel like that solidarity is without that, what's the point? Hmm. No, I agree. I feel like I was waffling. I got nervous because my mom came in the kitchen. So yeah, I, like I, I, I had to. I had to make good points. In it. <laughs> no, no, but I was saying, like you know, you was you were saying, like oh, it's quite a div- device divided uh, front in terms of free Palestine. Um, yeah, and I feel like even AB, you said it in another in another episode, like instead of getting jealous of like how well other movements are doing, or like seemingly well they're doing, people need to start unifying instead of dividing. Um, amongst themselves and all that stuff. Uh, mm. The the George Floyd, the way he was he was handled by the police officer, like with the the knee on his neck. Yeah. There's a picture. The same thing was used. Yeah. The same tactics are used by Israeli military and police, and in India to to farmers protesting, yeah. and like there's I don't know I don't want to like go into things which I'm not sure about, but like the, the I read some stuff about how Israeli police officers were trained by the same firms that American police officers were trained by, or American officers were trained by the same firms that Israeli police officers were trained by. So like, there's so much that links these struggles, but strategically the media divides them, I think. Bro, you know, I feel like Abe will know about this, yeah? But you know, you know the, 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 even their police and all, a lot of their citizens are trained in some crazy combat sport you know called Krav Maga yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ju- yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a Jewish combat sport it's their own, like you know how like you have Jiu Jitsu Muay Thai yeah. and stuff like, they have their own combat sport that yeah, they like yeah. their forces and like bro I can't lie it is it's like a, a wavy combat sport it's but, a like, madness it's not, it's, not, it's not some dickhead thing like it's a it's madness it's practical what's it, like, what's it called? Krav Maga Krav Maga mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's like Jiu Jitsu Muay Thai yeah but for the streets, like for real life situations, like they show you how to like take like a disable um, a man with a knife and that. Yeah, mm. like that's like that's like one of the first lessons. Um, but yeah, they learn Krav Maga. Uh, what were you, what were we saying before? Like, about, like, um, so Perry was talking about how um, I know the picture he's talking about. There's like four pictures in that one, and then like it's all like like a police officer. Well, like someone with authority kneeling on like a citizen's neck. Yeah, 
And like what we should be talking about is like police brutality or like human rights, but instead we're talking about only these people rights and these people rights. Yeah. And you, you know, you know when I say like transactional activism is rubbish, yeah. I don't feel like that. I, I feel like I need to make it clear that it doesn't make it doesn't give anyone a free pass to be a dickhead about it, though. Do you know what I mean, like, you know, how I was saying before, like, oh, I wouldn't say to AB, like, oh, I helped you with this and hold it over his head, yeah. Do you know what I mean, just because that's wrong, it doesn't mean that morally you don't have a you don't have a like a reason to support Palestine. Do you know what I mean, Dude, I, I don't know if I made sense there, but like, I feel like sometimes people will be like, oh, trans. Transactional activism is wrong, but it doesn't excuse you of of not doing anything at all. At the same yeah, time. because nobody can watch this and say like, "Oh, I feel like instead of people like point your fingers," because clearly it's about like comparing movements. It's like, it's like, it's kind of like who suffers more. Like the whereas yeah, the, it's, the it's thing is, tough. yeah, the point is that we're all suffering. Like that's the point. Like it's not who suffers more. And do you get me? Yeah. So instead of pointing your fingers, I feel like people could ra- raise more awareness by posting videos by posting what people are doing, um, like in terms of charity work, what's actually happening, like the background st- story, what's happening, what happened from like the first attack. Mm, um, exactly. Because Kyojin, that's what you were saying earlier as well, or that's what you were going to talk about, that sometimes just posting videos seems ineffective with certain movements. Like oh, for yeah. example, if, if, if with BLM, all you do is post a video, then like you might say that that's not really... Yeah, it's performative, it's not really enough. But then, yeah. and you, you have a capacity to do more. And even for Palestine, we do have a capacity to do more, which is what we'll talk about after. But even raising awareness for Palestine is so point, important. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, so important. Because yeah, no one knows about it, no yeah. one talks about it. I feel like, yeah, Palestine is the one cause where I feel like if anyone jumps on saying, like, don't be performative, yeah, don't listen to them. Because you, we need that right now. Because yeah. as we were saying before, you know when we spoke about before how like speaking about Palestine used to be so taboo and it is still to an extent. The Definitely fact that people is, yeah. are, are, feel okay to be performative, well, like that's a good thing. Do you know what I mean, you may see it as a bad thing, like oh, don't be don't be performative. And yeah, there is, as you said, there is a capacity to do more, but at least people now feel like they can say things. I'm seeing celebrities that in never in a million years would I ever see them talk about it because they would lose uh, they would lose deals. Do you know what I mean? But now people are like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to say it. Do you know what I mean? People are arguing about it on Twitter. Like, that's what we need to see. And if it's performative, then yeah. Do you know what I mean? 100%. 100%, yeah. People need to be like, a bit more like Ozil, man. Man sacrifices his whole football career. Well, the rest of his football career. To speak up against the Chinese Chinese Muslims. Mm. Yeah, now man, and, now man's that was in darkness. It. Yeah, it's, it's always sad as well, like, sometimes there's one figure like that, like Colin Kaepernick, for example. Yeah. His, whole, his whole career was cancelled, but now now everyone is suddenly doing the same thing he did, that, and now it's, like, cool. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. He, it's all like, he spearheaded that movement, like, from behind. And same with uh, Azu, I guess. A lot more people are talking about that now because of him. Is that a sacrificial line, isn't it? Like, yeah. E- even when you look at, like, I would say, like, even Loki, innit? Um there, uh, there was definitely scope for him to go more mainstream with his music. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? But he's 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 dedicated his whole craft to actually making a difference, and I think that is so wavy. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. I, I respect he, that guy so I swear, much. I swear, the reason he quit music is so he could help people in Palestine. I swear. I I don't know. I think there was a number of things. Um, like also I I, were, on him as well. Yeah, it? yeah, that as well. Yeah, that um, must be so scary and so tiring. And also, he went to he went to uni as well. Um, I'm a I'm big Loki fan. I can't lie. Loki, I if you're Carla watching, if you're watching this. <laughs> he is, man. He's watching this. <laughs> Bro, we always. Uh, um, uh, there was like a phase in year ten and eleven. That's the time where we used to bring the Palestine flag and used to put it on the table and stuff. We used to have like the buzz cuts and stuff like Loki. Um, <laughs> everyone used to be talking about like free Palestine. You know that obviously the song "Long Live Palestine." People were chanting it and stuff like that. Um, yeah, he's in a big inspiration. Man. I can't lie. So yeah, what, what other things do you think people can do to help out? We can go through um, some of the things. Did you have anything, Craig? So I was going to just say about what we were talking about media. Like any other issue, pretty much, they have some kind of media coverage of them like in a positive way, right? Like 
it's not all completely like it doesn't exist. Like it, even even in whichever, even if you like, I don't know, like the Indian struggle, I keep talking about that, or like BLM, mm-hmm. there are some news organizations, even if they're not in the mainstream, they would report it. But with Palestine, for me, that doesn't exist. Yeah. Like I can't see even even some left wing organization like The Guardian, bro, even they talked about it like clashes between missiles and rockets. I feel like something that would be so sick is if people could create a kind of like a platform where we share news because like right now what twitter is kind of like though i i don't know i don't i don't really use twitter to be honest i feel like twitter is where where i get all my news from but then do you think it's it's it has a reach beyond your echo chamber Mm, no but would you say that the Daily Mail has a reach beyond, other than like when you see it highlighted and you're outraged by it. Uh, Daily Mail articles don't reach that, don't reach me. Do you know what I mean? So, for me, the, the reason why stuff like Daily Mail is so dangerous yeah. is because their viewers are not just viewing that like for one topic area. It's not like I'm racist, so I'm going to view Daily Mail. Yeah. It's like, like I, I might be not racist necessarily, but I might be reading it because I like that what they talk about fashion or they talk about reality TV or whatever they talk about. Right. So then, but then now they're also doing racism. So then I'm going to be exposed to that as well. So if we had a, a conversely, if you had a news outlet or something, even like a blog, whatever, if, if you were talking about all kinds of stuff, but just from the right perspective that we want to see it. So you're not only talking about Palestine, you're talking about a bunch of different stuff. Then you, it's like you're countering that because you're exposing people to, from all different areas to just the right information. For me, that's like a good idea. You know what? We should do a news with Titan, you know? I would, I could, I, I would be down to like devote time. Or even, and like, you could ha- have like people writing. I'm sure a lot of people would write for you. Like a, like a blog post. But it could be both. Like it could be news articles. Because the thing is right now, before, if you want to start a newspaper, you need reporters. You need someone to go there. But yeah. like right now, you can, you can get the news instantaneously. Bro, if, if, they, if they publish an article on the BBC that says clashes, within 10 minutes, we can have one written that says Israeli attacks on Palestinians. Mm-hmm. And then, like, at least we're contributing to changing the narrative. Do you get me? Yeah. No, I feel that. Um, that's definitely we can, something we can look into. Did you apologise, Bob? No, I was going to say that was, that was like a... Not necessarily like a thing that people can do on a day-to-day basis. No, nah, just... but, that, but like that's how we're us, isn't it? Like what we what we would do you, you, even even if there's anyone listening, like, it's not like we got a pattern on it. Like, if there's anyone listening, wanting to like write more, get involved more, do those things, like feel free. Even it doesn't even like as we said. Obviously, it would be ideal to have like a whole like curated newspaper or online experience or or article experience. But for the layman, if you want to just like make a blog about, it, you want to make a tweet about, it, you want to make an Instagram post. What the hell? My back on just <laughs> like you want to make a Instagram post about you like you want to do spread news like that, then like hundred percent do that. Do you know what I mean? Because there are a lot of people that are doing bits like that. There's that guy who we were saying that we didn't want to give his um we'll probably link him on the on our Instagram story. Mm. Uh because we do post a lot of his stuff. Um but he made loads of videos where you can get facts about Chef Jarrah and what's happening there, facts about the Al Aqsa Mosque attacks as well. Um and I feel like people like that are so sick, like they're like they're laying out like this is what's happening. This is and like all in like a systematic order in it. P paragraphs from videos, do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, no, no, I think that's a very good idea, do you know what I mean? What are, what other things do you guys think people can do on a, like a day to day basis? Um, I think with donations, uh, just be a little bit careful because I did see that there are a couple people just uh, trying to profit off unfortunately what is happening in palestine there are some people that are just making just giving pages here and then like posting them under every post and being like feed mm-hmm. feed, feed the palestinian orphans and stuff like that um, just That's be careful months. just double check um because you know we would have legit um charities with a hundred percent donation policy in the links mm-hmm. i mean in the description below yeah you know I mean? and like yeah, I don't, our uh, socials. it is easy to find charities that are actually doing good work like yeah, they, yeah. Charities have to publish all the information and stuff. Like, I feel like right now, so many people I speak to, they're just, if you mention the word charity, they're just like, oh, no, I don't trust that stuff. What do you mean you don't trust yeah. that yeah. stuff? Like, there's so many people doing good work, at least support them a bit. Yeah, in, in general, I believe you should give your charity like blindly. If you have the money and you don't need the money, 
and you feel like it's a good cause, give it and then don't worry. Like obviously expose people if they're doing bad, but have that faith that it will go to a good mm. cause. Um, another thing you can do, as we said, some people don't want to be visibly supportive. I mean, you should be at this point, uh, but if you don't want to be, or if you want to do something a little bit more undecided, um, you can write to your MP. Uh, so uh, there's this website called FOA, Friends of Al-Aqsa. Uh, if you can't have access to our links, just for any reason, you can go to that website. They have a bunch of things that you can do um, under different hashtags and different methods. So one of them is writing to your MP. Just find out who your local MP is. Um, if, I, I was going to say, I don't know if want, I've said my, my one on, on the podcast before anyway. If you live in Harrow East, um, contact well, Blackman Black is Man. calm, bro. Uh, that guy, he probably won't but do even, he's a dickhead. No, but even okay, so even them, if, if we're looking at like results of our activism, if you if you write to your MP and you include your own address, they legally like they have to respond to you. So, and he will respond to you personally, not just like a general response. So, you have to leave your address, you have to give him your address Ooh. so he can write because they'll write back to you, they will send it in the post, but that shouldn't put you off like. He, he knows where you live anyway. If you want, if yeah, you're the, guy, the guy puts letters through my post every day. Yeah, Bob Blackman, if you listen to this, don't come near my house and stop claiming so many expenses, you bitch. I yeah. hate you. And like, obviously, <laughs> also, also, you know what else? Unblock me on Twitter because that pagan blocked me on Twitter just because I called him out after he was falsely claiming expenses a thousand pounds in 2017 <laughs> for a thousand pounds extra claimed for driving. You fat shit. You've been taking extra routes around London instead of going directly. Bro. To your destination and taking our money, you you're scared. gonna get tired and talk to blocked as well. From I, don't care I don't care anymore. Fuck for black man. He's not even black he probably just went through. Man. He probably just went through Sadi Khan's following and blocked everyone. Like, <laughs> don't see this blocked as well, man. <laughs> he blocked me right after I, I tweeted him. You know, fucking waste. He's so That's quick not. with it. It was yeah, the like, he, time even... where he refused to like where he voted against feeding the children during yeah, some holidays. Scum, scum, bro punk even him though he's interested in like gaining office again and winning enough votes so if bare people from our constituency were to write to him he'll be like oh wait i might not win these votes if i don't if i don't change my i think that's, that's i don't want i don't want to put people off sending letters to the mp but in my case it's very very optimistic because that guy has um ties to the rss um and bmp is it not bmp that's Bangladesh national party was it called bjp sorry uh, yeah, he's that. He's super, bro. But that, but that's what I'm saying. He, why do you think he's so like pro, bro? This, this guy in in the House of Parliament, he took his oath on the Bhagavad Gita and the Bible. Like he's he's a simp basically for good for. This, get, fam, this guy, this yeah. guy has been lobbying for pro cost legislation in the UK. But then, what really? You say so, pro cost. What? So Joke, like, he, this guy's he, a mess. He campaigned to stop bills going through that would stop companies. Uh, what's that word called? Discriminating based on cost. That's how much he panders to, like, obviously his general. But it's only business. because they support him, right? Like, if if they were, if Hindu people weren't like arguing for something else, he would have to like, because the Hindu people are the, the basically the vote deciders in this constituency. <clears throat> yeah. So like, if I know they're not going to come on board to Palestine issues, but like inshallah, I'm saying, inshallah. they have they have power. Like, Listen, numbers. if prayer can. I know you guys can too. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And as we said before, anyway, it's not like a religious issue. It's not Muslims versus Jews. There's Palestinian Christians. There's Palestinian Muslims. I think they may even be Palestinian Jewish people. I don't know. But um, there's, there's, there's there's people who live on the Israeli side that are Muslim. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not... It's, we need to... I think that's one big issue that I don't understand how so much of US po politics and policy and like Israeli policy is based on religion i feel like everything mm. in my opinion all foreign policy should be secular in my opinion anyway Do you know what I, mean? I can't i can't believe that man. but then it can't right because because their state is inherently a, a jewish state right yeah but um I, th I think jewish people are a ethno religion or something they're not like yeah, but the, no but then do you, know, that, do you see the problem now like that now that they've conflated that like the 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 state of Israel has conflated that, so now that is an inherent it's part a very of the identity. Sticky one, so isn't it? Like, yeah, that. I mean, so yeah. like that's how apartheid laws can like become normalized, which they have. Bro, you mm. know, like Palestinians, they have to take a different route to work. 
and Let's take checkpoints people, as well. Yeah, like they can be stopped anytime. Like they have to carry different identification. This so many it's people have called it apartheid. apartheid. Fun, it, so many people have called it apartheid, but like it won't ever penetrate the media. I guess the mainstream the, media. Uh, MSM. Yeah, so I always see racist people using that term though. You know. Really? Yeah, it was always these like these Adan people, and they'll be like, "Oh, uh, Muslims are doing this, but the MSM won't 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 report it." I'm like, "What? Are we watching the same mainstream media?" <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But that's uh, probably true. Probably not as well, like because they're in there in echo chambers as well. But yeah, as we were saying, um, this particularly to stop the eviction of Palestinian families from Sheikh Jarrah, you can write to your MP. Uh, make sure you put somewhere there. Um, Save Sheikh Jarrah. Um, there are also drafts as well that you, you know, if, you, if you're not wanting, to, if you don't know how to write one up, we will link a draft as well that you can um, send. Uh, just looking through what else you can do. There are some more campaigns. So there's um, Stop Arming Israel as well. Again, you can write to someone called James Cleverly. He's the Minister of State, Minister of State at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Um, obviously, to do with foreign policy right you can write a letter to him there's also on that same website there's a suggested letter that you can edit for your own sake for your name and all those things um or if there's anything you want to add or take away probably don't take away anything because it is very comprehensive and well written um you can write to them to say that you know we don't want to arm israel because why would we um mm -hmm. for me i think like bds yeah. is like the most effective the bds and protesting for me are the most effective thing but it's like yeah. if you would do bds it's like tell someone that you're doing it yeah and don't be afraid of like what why, what kyojin said earlier about feeling oh i'm being performative be performative, be performative yeah at Before the bare yeah, minimum like know. yeah exactly like if you if you're boycotting something and you don't tell anyone then you're just, you're not boycotting it, you're just not buying it but like if that you mean. If, if you say I'm doing it for this reason, I bought this brand for this reason, then people are aware of it. Like, Yeah, so th there's another, uh, with BDS, there's a th thing called Check the Label. Um, obviously, Ramadan is finished. It's last day tomorrow. Um, but do check uh, where you're getting your food from. If it says product of Israel, obviously dates, don't, don't buy dates that. Yeah, dates. Sabra, Sabra is a, a hummus brand that we should be avoiding. Yeah. Uh, Puma. Any any trade with I illegal Israeli settlements? Yeah, Puma is another one. Um, there's a lot of things. Do, do, do. We can slowly find them because what we'll, any awkward pauses where they are. Yeah, I think Nestle is one of them. Nestle is one of them, which is annoying because their water bottles are so nice. But to be fair, <laughs> yeah, to be fair, like I do need to start getting like a, a refillable water bottle. Yeah, it's the same store. Yeah, that's like, like a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, even with Nestle, like, say, if you, if you, if we're not talking about it, then you might as well just go to Morrison's and buy Nestle stuff. Like, it doesn't, it's not going to harm a Palestinian to do that. But if okay, well, it probably is. But like, the the impact is so tiny. But if you if you don't buy Nestle and tell people, I feel like the impact. Yeah. Is well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Just to reiterate what you said, in case no people didn't get it, like boycotting is just not 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 buying stuff. As Prague said, that means you're just choosing not to buy something. If you want to boycott something, let people know and make yeah. and try and get them to boycott it as well, uh, because otherwise, it, it, you know, like your one pound, two pound, unfortunately, doesn't make a difference in terms of like just in the grand scheme of things, it will. But you have to make that grand scheme of things. You mm. can't just wait for it to happen. And I think with with the Palestinian fight, it's like we they try to convince us that like it's like two sides arguing over something and like it's just some age old conflict that both sides have validity. But in reality, this is like we should be confident in the fact that we know that we're in the right here, and we shouldn't yeah. we shouldn't feel like we're trying to persuade people. Yeah, we should feel like we're trying to present people with the facts because like just like me and so many other people came into this conflict with. Not, no knowledge of it as soon as you see the facts presented as they are you know you're going to support palestinian people because that's the natural thing to do yeah so, yeah um so yeah you can also uh, just staying on the topic of um 
sending letters to your MP. You can write also to vaccinate Palestinians. That's a really, really important one uh, because they haven't been vaccinated. That's a really, really important thing to think about. This is, by the way, if you're in the US, UK, Canada, all of these governments have a lot of power in terms of that. Um, even if you're like, I don't know if we have any French listeners, but even if you're in France, um, all those countries, maybe France is a bit of a, a booky one at times. Uh, but yeah, um, definitely speaking to the government directly. Your voice really does matter uh, yeah. a lot. Um, donations. The thing is, donations, we want to double check before we plug you with any. Um, we don't want yeah, to just we, blindly we'll give description, you though. Yeah. yeah, we'll put them into our link tree in our Instagram at the Titan Talk. Um, and yeah, just like, you know, as we were saying, when you were saying be performative, we need to get rid of this whole thing of it being taboo. Do you know what I mean? Of people being scared of or like being blacklisted and all this and that. There's nothing there's nothing like shameful about talking about it. Like, you know, it's not immoral. You're not gonna end up offending someone like even if you do, my fuck it, man. Yeah, facts. And also it's like for me it really when you get disheartened, it really helps me like mentally to see things actually happening and like so many things are actually happening as a result of these protests yeah like just for example that trial being delayed like that shows like oh they they can see us now 100%. and they're trying to mitigate it so and if if that noise doesn't go away then what are they going to delay that trial forever of course not yeah i know that waste man Netanyahu is he's shaking his boots you know <laughs> in the recent assembly whatever he was like we're not going to conform to what people are saying on Twitter. I'm like, yeah, you see us, bitch. Do you know what I mean? Exactly, like, exactly, exactly. See what we're saying. Exactly. Um, yeah. And again, as we said, like performative activism is, is not a good thing. And I usually don't feed into this like, oh, that's so cool. This celebrity said that. This celebrity said that. But I feel like in this case, it is cool. it, yeah, like, because you never see them do that. Do you know what I mean? And it's a good thing to see them do that. Um, so stop making it taboo. Start speaking about it. Um, and also direct your energy in the right places. Stop blaming the BLM organizers for they, they haven't done anything to you. Um, because if, if you deep it, yeah, what was I gonna say? Actually, no, no, nah, I don't have a point there. <laughs> no, 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 if the bro, they're just done, they they fought, they use their voice, they use their platforms to, yeah, to gain, gain, to gain an audience for what they believe that should be done in it. Yeah, take so inspiration I feel like that's that. something that we should do yeah take inspiration all, instead of pointing fingers up. we all have like some people who we can be influential over yeah yeah like, even if it's small do your thing like if it's big do your thing definitely do your thing even more like yeah there's not and really also, any also I, I don't know if there's any is i know the summary is kind of all over the place but there's a lot of things i want to get off my chest in it Sick. if there are any is really like sellers out there or people who think that it's okay to like set illegal or settle in people's homes. Yeah. Shout me, I'll come, I'll come back here, your house. Come <laughs> yeah, man, come, bro, come bro, on, man. Bro, me and the man will pull up to your crib. My great great granddad used to live there, so um, that's my house now. Yeah, hello. I, I just think, imagine, yeah, imagine I, I'm moving into a house here, yeah, but I know that the people who lived there before me were forcefully removed and they still want to live there and they're like probably homeless and struggling right now. How can you live with yourself? Like, does your soul not feel weird? Do you know what I mean? I could never sleep in the house. I mean, I would feel like, what have I done? Do you know what I mean? There's a very good book about this called Lemon Tree, if anyone wants to read it. Um, that sounds good. That sounds good. Do you know the author? I can't remember. I'll give um, it. The, the Lemon Tree, though. Yeah. The Lemon Tree. Oh, there's a place called Lemon Tree near our house. Uh, book in it. Oh, here it is. The Lemon Tree, an Arab, a Jew, and... The middle of the heart, the, the heart of the Middle East. That one, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. So I, I kind of mumbled that one, but it's the lemon tree, an Arab, a Jew, and the heart of the Middle East, uh, and it is by Sandy Tolan. Yeah, it's good. Available good book. on um, Amazon, but you should probably support your local bookshop as well. Is there a bookshop in Enns? What's the cool. Waterstones, W.H. Smith. W.H. Smith is money laundering, so let's not go there. But... <laughs> what is there actually? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> He's trying to say, like, how did, how did they stay open all this time? But no oh. no, but then, at the same time, I, I, don't, I, I don't get that joke here because when you go to the airport and you want to get all your, like, 
you're essential. You got W.A. Smith, <laughs> oh, right? so They're just making peas of four pound water. That's it. <laughs> Bro, they spent. They cost. It costs a lot of money to get water. They have neck pillows there. They have sleeping masks. They have a book for you to read. A tooth. If you forget your toothbrush, you buy a toothbrush for like ten pound. Do you know what I mean? But... They're making bare money off the, off off um off GE. I guess. I guess. I, said, oh, I G- think you mean G3. Yeah, G3. 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 But yeah. Um, but yeah, so that would be a good. Have you read the book? Yeah. So it's about okay. like, it's about uh, um, Arab who's, who's evicted from their house in 1948, and then Israeli family who's living there and like kind of like tries to go into both of their emotions because it's like a weird one. Imagine your uh, third generation illegal settler so your grandma settled in that which is a reality for a lot of people like they're fourth generation now probably their their great grandmother settled in the house and they kicked out a palestinian but then now that child also sees that as their home do you get me Have so they then been there, do you know what I mean? yeah and then they'll grow up and then then they'll they might never because because obviously the propaganda is so strong they might never even encounter the palestinian perspective or they in this case in the book she does and then it's like about her internal conflict like wait i feel really guilty about this like why am i living on land that was stolen do you know so i'm to read it that sounds very sick yeah that sounds very very good um so yeah educate yourself um see things from perspectives that you wouldn't usually see it i'm not saying see it from those peaceful zionists yeah because some of those videos i've been watching them and they, they nearly get you fam i can't lie they nearly get you um it's important to see the side anyway hmm. Even if you're not gonna like agree with it, obviously. Yeah, and then also, one last thing as well. If because again, I feel like I spoke about TikTok a lot today, yeah. But if there's a Jewish creator, yeah, they're just being Jewish. They're not doing anything, yeah. Leave them stop, alone, fam. Yeah, stop commenting "Free Palestine" yeah. underneath their video. Like it is that is anti-Semitism. That is anti-Semitic. Because okay. they've not done nothing to you. They're just existing. They've not said that they're Zionists. They've not done anything to aggravate you. They're just practicing their religion. I mean, because you, it's so harmful to the cause because it makes it this thing between two different religions. When, as we said, there are Palestinian Christians, um, and we want everyone to care about this. It's, it's a humanitarian issue, not a mm. religious issue. Do you mm. I mean, so stop making it one. Do you know I mean? Agreed. Agreed. Um, Let us know if you want a news with Titans um, segment aside from uh, four, uh, four episodes. Yeah. Well, like if you guys would want to read stuff, yeah, you get me. That was the most sleepy well, yeah, question ever. KOJ and AB would like to, no, sorry, no, scrap that. AB and KOJ would like to thank, uh, thank you, Perek, for coming on and being uh, very informative. I've learned, I feel like I've learned you. a lot. Um, yeah, I feel like I've learned a lot as well. Yeah. Do you have any last thoughts that you want to like, maybe share with the people? Um. Sorry, I just, I, I think, I feel we, co- we covered a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I think the main thing is like, we need to keep talking about it. And I, I feel optimistic, I can't lie. Even though like the situation on the ground, like for Palestinian people is the worst it's been in so many years. But like, all they've been, in, they, the thing is like, they will go to protests and get shot. People wearing medic, it happened last year, someone wearing a medic thing in Palestine, they were shot by police and oh, they died. Girl. I I think I don't remember who it was, but someone was wearing medic and it said it in big lettering, and they were shot by Israeli uh, military, yeah. and it was like a targeted shot, right? And nothing happened to that person. So that's what happens to them when they protest. Like the least we can do is talk about it, if not protest, if not BDS. Like there's so many things we can do which doesn't really affect us. It doesn't put our life in danger. It doesn't even put our career in danger. We can do that, so yeah, you know what else? Yeah, just to sort of go off that, yeah, like we brought a seasoned protester on to the show, yeah. Um, but I just want to address there are a lot of I don't know how to say this, but there are a lot of Muslim people that be like who who are so anti protest, yeah, and it will lie, it pisses me off, yeah. Why why are they anti protest? Because they believe the, it's, it's haram, yeah. The thing is, I don't want to go into too much like, um, like. Islamic stuff in it because obviously, as I said, it's not a Muslim issue. But there are a lot of people who would be like, "Oh, uh, the people in Palestine are are dying. Yet you're going to a protest when you should be doing this and this and this." Like, oh, I saw this. I... And, it's, and and it's like, shut up, man! Like a lot of those people at the uh, the protest, first of all, are not Muslim. 
Um, so why are you telling them to stay at home and make du'a? Like they don't make. Do you know what I mean, obviously you have your own form of like manifestation, prayer, all that stuff. Yeah, but it's not a creed that you follow, right? Yeah. Um, so stop shaming them. And secondly, like even if the, oh, there should be Muslims at protests, and they are doing something, you can like go to a protest and then go home and make du'a and pray. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean like protests do work, man, and like. They are helpful and, all and this it's like, like the haram is so stupid, bro. Yeah, just because like just because it's something obviously like I'm not Muslim, so like I don't wanna like speak on the religion yeah, or about so. it. Like like if some just because Palestine is something far away, that shouldn't de- make us feel detached from it. But like if the, if there was someone next to you who needed your help, you wouldn't like go home and pray for them, you would help them. So like oh. if there's if there's ways that you can help people by your actions. Surely the right thing to do is that. Yeah. And before any like Haram please jump on jump on our line and say like, oh, we're going against Islam, bro. I'm not telling you not to pray. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Pray. Obviously, do, like prayer is very important as, as a person of faith. That's really, really important. If you, any religion you are, make sure you pray, um, but also take the actions as well. But it's always these people who like, because those same people will say to you, like, oh, you can't you can't protest against a, a Muslim government. So they'll be like, yeah. They'll allow everything that Saudi does because they'll be like, it's haram to protest against a, a Muslim government. Mm. It's nonsense, bro. Like, oh, no, for that, Saudi... Actually, you know what? No, I forget. I'm not going to get into it. It's... Maybe for another episode. But any, yeah. anyone, who, anyone who transgresses against people should be... Is, is, is available for criticism. That goes for Israel. That goes for Saudi Arabia. That goes for any country. Didn't Saudi uh, book Nicki Minaj for a concert? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. There's more I could say, but that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> take take from that what, what you guys what you guys will but yeah you know i mean like, all this all this um, again as we said like all this all this like c- c- cliquiness do you know what i mean like oh you're this you're that so i'm gonna I'm, shut up man do you know what i mean um, on that note <laughs> no i'm joking wait no no no, no. no sign no, no, petitions no, no, no. Yeah, send, yeah yeah <laughs> send emails and letters to your mps harass them don't like physically harass them but like verbally like told them you need to do this you need to do this we're not happy with this we're not happy with that Get on their case. Find the find where you can donate. Um, spread the message in a positive way. Don't blame people. Don't blame other people where the blame is not needed. Think about the reasons why this is happening and what you can do to help with it. Because obviously, as we said, it's a whole narrative where this is seen as a, a taboo thing to think about and mm. to talk about and, and try and deconstruct that wherever you can. Um, yeah, and it's not like a one-time thing. Like obviously, you don't feel like you have to go away today and do a hundred things like yeah 100 like it's a long it's like a learning process and if you learn more about it then you will naturally feel like oh i can do this and oh like i'm i have this power in this place i can do this with it like it's like learning more about it as well just reading yeah. like, talking to people all of that i i know i know you've been tired yeah <laughs> i just yeah. have one more question because i saw this one girl she was like oh uh, if your friends don't post about Palestine, you should cut them off. What do you think about that? No, you should tell them. What's the problem yeah. cutting them off? Well, why are you making your circle smaller? Tell it's like always. It's always with, with, with these people. Why is it always the extreme? Like yeah, yeah. You know 100%. what I'm saying? Just tell them. Bro, so it's one thing of cutting them off. Like, it's both. It take more energy to cut someone off than just to be like, "Yo, bro, uh, post this. This is what's happening." Yeah, it's okay. like if you cut them off, they're not gonna know why. Like, exactly. tell, tell yeah. them. Nuance, Salah. Shut up, man. Good night. Ah 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 ah